In this tutorial, we're going to tackle combining two separate shapes into one object without using booleans. So we will be building this uh, designer shades. So let's get started. First, let's set up our image planes. So I'm going to go to my front view. And then I'm going to go to view. And then image plane. And then import our image. So I placed my images at my desktop. So here. And then I'm going to click open to import it. I'm also going to import the side view of this reference. So I'm going to go to our side viewport. And then I'm going to go to view. And then image plane. And then click on import image. I'm going to go back to our desktop and then import our side image. So I'm going to click open. So this now imports our side image. If we go to our perspective to check... Uh, let's check if everything is lined up. Before we start, uh, let's also move the side reference image to the left side of the front image and then maybe uh, place it at the center. So to do that, uh, let's select our image plane. To select our image plane, let's go to our side view and then go to view and then click on select camera. Once you select the camera of the side view, it also shows the image planes that you've imported. So this is uh, our side image is called image plane 2. We could rename it to uh, side reference photo. Okay. Uh, first, uh, let's move the image to the left side. So to do that, uh, look at your perspective. Uh, for your axis reference, we can see that the X drives the left and right direction. So under, under center X, let's type in negative 15. Now this moves our image to the left side. And then let's also move it to the center. So to do that, let's look at our reference uh, for the axis. Uh, we can see that uh, Z drives the forward and backward direction. So let's go to center Z and type in negative 15. Now this centers the image to the uh, perspective view. Okay, once uh, that is done, let's also hide our image planes. So go to view, select camera. Then while the camera is selected, go to the attributes editor. Uh, press Ctrl A or just click on Attribute Editor. Uh, here, we can see that's a side reference photo. This is our image plane. Uh, set display to looking through camera to hide it. So let's also do that to our front view or to our front reference. So let's go to view, then select camera. Now this selects our camera for our front view. And we could also see that it shows our image plane 1. So we could rename this as front reference photo. And then make sure to set the display to looking through camera. Okay, now we're done setting up our image planes. We can start building our 3D object. Okay, first uh, I'm going to go to our front view and then I'm going to zoom out. I'm just going to hide the grid in our viewport. So let's go to display and then let's uncheck grid. Uh, now uh, let's look at our reference photo. So let's find the closest polygon primitive we could use to start building our shape. So I'm going to start with a polygon torus. So let's go to create polygon primitives and then let's click on torus okay so let's just uh, rotate it so that it would be facing our front camera so I'm just going to rotate it uh, 90 degrees okay uh, let's move it into position and then let's scale it up okay uh, next let's start uh, customizing the settings of our torus. So let's go to our channel box and then let's go to our inputs. 
So under our inputs, I'm going to change the subdivisions axis to 8. And then the subdivisions height to 5. And then last, I'm going to set the section radius to 0.1. Okay, so now let's start uh, moving the vertices to match our reference photo. So I'm going to right click on our torus object and then select vertex. And then I'm, we're just going to move these vertices around to match our reference photo. I'm not going to mind the thickness of the shape yet. I will just move the vertices so that it would match our uh, photo. Okay. So we've got the basic uh, shape pinned down. Now let's start uh, scaling this down to match the thickness of our reference photo. So I'm just going to click the scale tool and then I'm going to place my cursor in the middle manipulator box and then just drag to minimize the radius of our torus there. Okay. And then for this part, I will just uh, rotate this so that it would match the contour of our reference photo. Okay. I will just then move the set of vertices up here. And then I will just scale them up as well. Then I will just uh, move the set of vertices here and continue on with the next set of vertices. Alright, so now uh, we've, we are done um, tweaking the vertices of our basic uh, divisions. Next is uh, let's start inserting edges so that we could match our shape better. So I'm just going to insert an edge here. And then let's just move this up. I'm going to insert another edge here, then move this up. Let's also scale this down. All right. And then let's also insert another edge here. And then move this to the side. Okay. Let's also insert an edge here. And then move this down. And then let's also insert an edge here and then move it down. These two right here, these edges here, and this, these edges here. Okay, uh, let's also add a few more edges here. Last one. Okay. Next, let's start uh, extruding the faces to match our reference photo. So we can see that uh, we have a shape that is protruding out from our torus. So let's select the faces here. And then let's extrude it. Okay, so let's just pull it out first, and then once we pulled it out, let's just select the vertices, and then let's align our 
where this is according to our, to our reference photo. Okay. Okay, now, so let's check our shape in our perspective view. So we have this shape right now. Next, uh, let's duplicate this shape uh, to the other side. To do that, let's move the pivot point to our center in the grid. So let's uh, display our grid back. So I just click on display and then check grid again. And then I'm going to press the letter D on my keyboard. Make sure to move it in the center of our grid. I'm going to press X while holding down D as well to lock our uh, pivot to our grid. Okay. Then let's release. Now, uh, before I start duplicating this, I will just uh, freeze the transformation of our torus. So select our torus object, go to modify, and then freeze transformations. This zeroes out all of our transformations. I will just also rename our torus into um, maybe shades. Okay. Then let's go to our duplicate special options box. So go to edit and then duplicate special. So let's just uh, reset the settings. And then let's duplicate our object and then scale it by a negative x. So under scale, type in negative 1. Click duplicate special. Now it duplicates our torus uh, to the other side. So to combine these two separate shapes, uh, all you need to do is select both of them and then go to Mesh and then click on Combine. Now, uh, as you can see, these are uh, the, the two separate objects are now one. If you could check your Outliner window, go to Window, Outliner. You can see uh, we only have one surface. These are these two. We could also just delete the history. So let's go select our torus object, go to edit, and then delete by type, and then history. This deletes all of our inputs. Next, uh, let's start uh, combining or bridging these two objects together. So first thing we should do is start deleting the faces that are um, being connected. So let's delete the faces here. Edit, delete. Oh, make sure you don't select anything, any other faces uh, at the back. So, okay, go to edit, delete, and then select these faces here. Go to edit, then delete. Okay. Now, in combining uh, two separate objects, now in combining two separate objects, we could either merge the vertices together. So let's right-click our torus objects, go to vertex, uh, select the two vertices that you want to connect, uh, then go to edit mesh, and then merge. This merges the two vertices together. Or you could also select the edges of our object and then go to Edit Mesh and then Merge. Okay, so the, this merges the two edges together. Or, or you could also use the Append Polygon tool. So let's go to Edit Mesh and then click on Append Polygon tool. This bridges the gaps of our surfaces. So let's click the first edge and then click the second edge. As you can see, uh, it bridges the two faces together or the two um, objects together. Press enter if you're done. 
it creates a face in between of our two objects. So let's press Y to redo last command. And then let's click this edge here and then bridge it to the other side. Press enter. So let's just repeat this process to create a loop around our designer shades. Press Y and then click these two. Press enter. Then let's press Y again. Select this edge here and then this edge here. Press enter or return on your keyboard. Press Y again. Click this edge and this edge over here. Press enter or return. Okay. So now we've uh, connected these two surfaces together. If you press uh, 3 to show our object in smooth mode, as you can see, uh, it links together our surfaces perfectly. Uh, let's go to our side view. And then let's make sure that uh, this matches our side reference. Okay, next let's start building the temple of our designer shades. Okay, so let's create a cube. So go to create, polygon primitives, and then cube. Then let's zoom in. Okay, so let's create this gray area here first. So let's select the vertices of our cube. And then let's just match it according to our reference photo. Let's add a few divisions. So go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. Let's cut a division here and here. Then select uh, the, our cube's faces. And then go to Edit Mesh, Extrude. OK. So let's go to our perspective view. And then let's move this to our side. And then maybe let's just scale this down. And then move the vertices so that it matches our geometry. Okay, then let's also move this down a bit. Okay, now let's, um, let's create the rest of our stem. So let's create another cube. Go to create, polygon primitives, and then cube. Let's place our cube right here. So let's trace the basic shape first. Let's go to our vertex, and then let's move our vertices so that it would match our reference photo. And then let's select uh, our face right here. And then go to Edit Mesh and then click on Extrude. And then let's just move this down. Then again, uh, let's go to our vertex. And then let's move it to match our reference photo. Okay. Then let's select again the face of our cube. Go to Edit Mesh and click Extrude. Let's move it down. Then let's adjust the vertices. And 
and then uh, one more time let's select the face and then extrude it then let's go to our vertex again and then move to adjust it and then let's select our face one more time then click on extrude Then click on our vert vertices. Then click on our move tool. And then let's match it with our reference photo. Okay, so let's go to our perspective view. And then let's move this to the side. And then let's match it with our geometry. So let's select our vertex right here. And here. Let's move it down. Then let's also move this up. Okay. Now um, let's go to our side view and then let's zoom in let's make a few divisions right here so go to edit mesh insert edge loop tool and then let's add the division here and then here and then let's also add the division here all right so next thing we should do is select the vertex first and then let's move it to match our reference photo. Okay, and now uh, let's go to our faces and select all of these faces here. And then let's delete them. Okay, let's go to our perspective view. Let's move this uh, to the side. Let's close the holes of our stem. To do that, let's go to Edit Mesh and use the Pen Polygon tool. Let's click this edge right here and this edge right here. Then press Enter to end the command. I'm going to press Y on my keyboard to repeat last command. And then let's click the edge right here and then on the other side. I'm going to press Y again. And then click this edge right here, and then this edge right here. Press Enter. Okay, now let's move this back. Okay. Then uh, press 3 on your keyboard to view it in smooth mode. As you can see, it's too smooth in the sides. So uh, press 1 on your keyboard to go back. Let's cut a few uh, edges at the corners so uh, let's click here and here then let's press 3 again so let's cut a few more here maybe here press 3 again okay and then maybe up top let's cut here and here press 3 okay and then last, let's maybe cut here and here. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go to our other shape. Press 3. So you can see it's too smooth. Uh, let's cut a few edges at the corners. So let's cut an edge here. And here. Press 3. Okay, let's cut another edge right here, then press 3 again, okay, and then let's cut another edge here, and here, press 3, okay, almost, let's cut another edge here, and then here, 
press 3 okay okay so that's good enough now let's uh, group these two objects together so go to edit group and then let's duplicate it so edit duplicate and then with the scale tool if I scale this to the opposite side so under scale X set it to negative 1 so it automatically moves to the other side okay now so next let's smooth all of our polygons to do that select all of your objects go to mesh and then smooth let's go to options make sure to reset all of the settings okay then click smooth as you can see it smooths out all of our edges uh, I'll just turn off the wire frame on shaded okay so you can do it more than once you can select all of our objects again and then apply another smooth okay next let's build the lens of our shades so let's go to fr the front view let's create a polygon plane and then let's move it to the side and let's rotate it I'm gonna type in 90 on my rotate X and then I'm gonna set the divisions to 3 the width and the height okay now I'm just going to scale this up and then move the vertices to match our reference photo so let's go to our perspective view and then move this inside our shades let's scale this maybe a little bit okay now uh, let's also select these vertices right here at the middle and then maybe let's just pull it up okay now, now let's group it to itself so go to edit group and then let's duplicate it so edit duplicate using the scale tool let's scale it to the other side so under scale x i will type in negative one okay so that concludes our tutorial for making designer shades in maya